Okay, I wanted to bring you some of this information about the Atlas Comet that's coming into our atmosphere um, on uh, May 22nd and May uh, 31st. It's going to be in Taurus. It hasn't been here for over 3,000 years. Um, and you can see here it's a green comet. It's a really huge comet, um, the size of the sun. So it's going to be <laughs> bringing some really um, huge energies into our atmosphere. And I've also discovered um, some scientists have been working on um, Venus conjunctions with... Uh, new moons and also this comet being at the same time so because i've been you know following the venus conjunctions with the founding of the united states and how the founding of the united states is all correlated to venus conjunctions i thought that was really uh, amazing information that i wanted to share with you they actually started to uh, discover it in december 28 in 2019 from hawaii like the 1844 comet, Atlas follows the trajectory that would require 6,000 years per orbit to take it beyond the outer reaches of our solar system. Uh, so it's on the same trajectory as the 1844 comet, um, and maybe it's uh, fragmented from several pieces of that comet. Um, and then it says here, but any comparison is dangerous. The 1844 comet was not uh, discovered until shortly after the uh, perihelion and we are we have no knowledge of the brightness behavior beforehand so every comet is different um, and uh, it had its glory written all over them it said only to utterly fail to live up to expectations this was another comet that was in uh, 1974 but this comet is huge and the fact that it hasn't been here for like they're saying here the orbit 6,000 years so over 3,000 years um, I think it has huge relevance and also with all the uh, mythos of um, Atlas, uh, the god, um, in many different cultures. So I think this comet has huge significance and I think it's related to some of the stuff that uh, we're experiencing right now. So this is where it started. You can see the green circle here. That is actually cancer. And the first like pink circle is where we are right now. And then it comes around and the other pink circle is the Pleiades. Now this is really important because it's in the constellation Taurus, which is all um, where the conjunctions of Venus and Jupiter and Uranus were kind of mapped out for the founding of the United States. So this green Y is the Silver Gate. And then you can see here they have Atlas marked that uh, June 1st. It's past the Pleiades. But, um, and then it comes around and it kind of does this loop and it goes back towards Cancer. And I've done some research on this that the, um, the Cancer um, Precipi uh, Beehive uh, Cluster is related to the uh, Hyades uh, Cluster that's in this Y. So there's a relationship between these two clusters. And it's just interesting that this comet happens to be on this trajectory where it's kind of joining these two clusters together. Right at the base of the Y, there's a little V cluster of stars, and they're called the Hyades. It's a little cluster there. But the actual star is Prima Hyadum. Um, and it also, in Chinese uh, astrology, it's considered to be the net. So, you know, this whole mythos of the Silver Gate it being where you have your judgment, um, you know, I explained this before, this is the path of, um, the harvest path is in that area of the sky. So it makes sense it's called the net. Um, and um, I also found out that the tip of the horn on um, the horns of Taurus, one of them has a crab nebula, which is the oldest supernova. I'm not going to go into that, but that I just find fascinating. And it's just a coincidence, I guess, that Trump happens to be born when the sun is on that uh, supernova. So the history of the Hyades, um, they are the five daughters of Atlas, being the comet's name, and half the sisters of the Pleiades, which happens to be in Taurus right on the shoulder, right? The, it's the crown of, um, of Jesus, really. The um, Pleiades are super important in mythos. Um, the naked eye, the Hades uh, cluster, um, have been known uh, since prehistoric times. 
Um, it is mentioned by numerous classical authors of Homer and the Ovid. The cluster uh, was probably first uh, categorized um, in um, 1654, and what else here? Um, the Parasepi, which is the beehive cluster, is M44. The Pleiades is M45, uh, Trump being the 45th president. I find that kind of funny. Now, this astronomer, um, Proctor, basically said it came from uh, a point of convergence, and he had discovered that it actually, the Hyades actually have a convergence with um, the beehive cluster in Cancer, which is considered to be the manger of Jesus. Now, the Hyades um, were actually the nymphs, okay? Um, they're also, you would consider to be the rainy ones. And I know William Moon, um, White House photographer, was going on and on about spring rain, spring rain um, uh, about a month ago or so. And I wasn't sure what he was talking about. I thought he was talking about the purple rain, but um, it's starting to make sense now that he was talking about this um, V cluster that is in this Y, you know. So um, I'm just like kind of blown away with the fact that this is the Silver Gate. I had never really looked into the Silver Gate to this extent. So the nymphs are related to um, the sirens, um, fairies. There's a whole mythos of them. But they actually kind of refer to the three fates, the Moria, which I've done, you know, some... Um, information digging on that in previous videos. So it, it's kind of interesting how all the mythos, you know, have different names at different times, but it's all relating to the the, the same thing. Here we have the uh, Hesperides, um, the Greek mythology. Um, they are related to the nymphs, the evening and golden light of the sunset, daughters of the evening, nymphs of the west. They are also called the Atlantides. Um, so, and their father is Atlas. So, you know, this is the same as the, the Hyades, um, their father is Atlas, right? Also the, um, Pleiades. The name, um, originating evening is Heperosus or Vesper. Now this is Venus, okay? If you go into Greek mythology, um, Heperos and Venus is actually the evening star and the morning star. So it says here, the planet Venus. So, you know, the English word for West. So you can start to see it's all entwined with Venus and um, the Cancer beehive and the Pleiades and the Taurus constellation, which is the Silver Gate, which is the Isis Silver Gate, which also refers to Venus. So you see, it's all part of the whole story is Venus is a super important planet. Um, and that's why the founding fathers were so obsessed with her and calculated the date of the founding of the United States around Venus. So they're also related to, uh, in Greek, the term for the bride. So we have that in the Bible, right? Uh, the bride. And uh, they might appear in a whirlwind. You know, I've talked about the whirlwind in the Antilla constellation that's above the ship, that, which is basically a vacuum um, so, you know, and the, the nymphs kind of are like the sirens. They kind of hypnotize you with sound. So you follow them, um, to the harvest. So this is all mythos, but it's all relating to this section of the sky. And there's no coincidence. Trump was going on about the movie Gone with the Wind instead of Parasite. So it's all reference to the harvest guys and the ascension. No kidding. So I was so excited because I got a like from the White House and also the White House photographer, uh, William Moon, at the same time. And I put spring rains is the Y because it's the Hyades cluster. But I, I spelt it Hades, which is actually the unseen god of the underworld. Okay, so there's a double meaning in here. And I think that's why I got the like. Um, and then I put X marks the spot. He just posted a, a lantern with an X um, on it. Um, and that's why I said this because he had been talking about the spring rains before. And I never knew what they were. And it just kind of came to me when I figured out, uh, you know, what was going on in the Silver Gate with this cluster. And you can see here uh, Trump talking about the coronavirus being the unseen enemy. And it relates to the Hades God. Okay, so the Hades God is the God of the dead. 
Okay, now I know it's the underworld, but I know that sounds weird, like it's like evil and it's like uh, hell, but my th real theory of understanding all this Greek mythos is that we are in the underworld. We are the dead because we're like, we're basically like sheep. We just follow, you know, we haven't gotten to higher gnosis consciousness, um, you know, which is basically was on the apostasy of Washington with George Washington be on the rainbow. And then you got the gnosis on one side of the rainbow and the harvest on the other. So we're basically just a crop because we're so asleep here. And this is how um, this is all about is about, you know, the wheel in the sky is to have this opening happening where you can get yourself free from this underworld. So this God is the God of this world. It's not the true God, just the God of the realm that we're in. Okay, so he also relates to, um, uh, let's see, the unseen here. This is where it says the unseen. The earliest tested form of is um, 80s, but it's the unseen God, okay? And it relates to Pluto. Now, we've just had a Pluto conjunction with Jupiter, um, and Jupiter being God or, you know, Jesus, Jesus for Zeus, Jupiter is Zeus. So um, that's interesting as well. And now they're saying this Hades God is also Pluto. Um, and what does it say here is also the meaning of a giver of the wealth. So he's also the meaning of Zeus of the underworld. So see, he's Zeus of the underworld. He's God of the underworld. And those avoiding... Um, for those that were avoiding his actual name, they didn't want to say his name. So they had all these different names for him. But he's the, the, the giver of the wealth. So, you know, it's just interesting, you know, is, is, is Trump Lucifer? Is he Thoth? Um, is he the light bearer? You know, nobody likes the word Lucifer, but really Lucifer is Venus. Okay. It's, um, it's phosphorus. It's, that's what Venus was called. So there's this whole understanding that Venus and we have the Pleiades um, in Taurus and Venus does all these conjunctions with Jupiter and Uranus always in, in Taurus and the Silver Gate. Um, and now we've got this comet coming in and it happens to be, you know, conjuncting with the sun in the Pleiades con constellation. So it's like, whoa, there's so much going on, but it's all relating to the Taurus, the bull, the uh, um, toroidal field which rep is represented by this constellation Taurus. The bull being the hyperbola, which is the middle of the toroidal field that looks like an apple, hence the big apple in New York. Okay, so it's like a core is in the middle. And you basically want to get to zero point uh, where you're not you know, black or white or red or blue. You're in the center. So being black and white, it would be twilight. Being um, red and blue, it would be purple. Okay, so you, you, this is how your emotional field has to work. You have to kind of get into gnosis, into knowledge, so you don't get sucked into this constant division and hate and all this stuff. And this is what this is all about. Or, and it's kind of hard because we have to release a lot of our preconceived conceptions of what evil is and what good is um, and try to just merge in a place where you can see it from, from an outside view looking in. And this is why I'm trying to put this stuff together so you can see that this is all connected to history. But in this real time, we're seeing that all the symbolism is coming into a convergence. So let's see. He also relates to the 12 labors of Hercules. I see Hercules as a representation of man. Um, and the Hesperides, uh, which are also called the Atlantides, um, had guarded by the dragon Ladon, um, Hercules went to Atlas and offered to hold up the heavens while Atlas uh, got the apples um, from the daughter. So they were guarding the apples, you know, the, the, the knowledge, I guess. Um, according to Plato, the first king of Atlantis was also named Atlas. So we have in different um, time periods, Atlas is super important, hence the comet that is coming, the green comet. Okay, so I just took a picture of, you can see there's a new moon eclipse on the sun, on the Pleiades, on the shoulder of Taurus. We have a Venus-Mercury conjunction. The other little pink circle, the tip of the left horn, that's where the crap um, nebula is, the first supernova ever recorded. And then you see the arrow, that's where Atlas is um, coming in by... Um, 
Medusa's head that Perseus is holding, which has the demon eye turning you to stone. It's coming by there on the 22nd when this eclipse is, ha um, is happening with the moon, the lunar eclipse, okay? Um, so that um, is super important. And then it continues, and I'll show you where it goes um, by the 31st. First, I wanted to show you that May 22nd um, is at the new moon. It's mapped out there. And the reason I'm showing you that is because there's scientists that have discovered new moon conjunctions with Venus conjunctions. Well, new moon eclipses with Venus conjunctions have had historic um, pandemics. So, yeah, that's a hard one to get your head around, but there's a whole scientific theory about why that is. Another ironic fun fact with the date, um, 5 uh, May with the 2222 year comes to 1111. No coincidences. So here it is as it moves uh, along on May 31st, and you can see Venus is in conjunction in the Silver Gate, and, and it's on the elliptical, the red line. So, and Mercury is above now. It's not in conjunction with Venus, um, which was on the 22nd when the moon eclipse was there. So, um, yeah, it's really quite interesting how it's there, and it's at um, 555. Um, in the evening. So it's still going to be daylight um, and as soon as it gets dark it's going to go below the horizon so it's uh, something to look out for um, at that time if hopefully we can see it and it's going to be right at the west and that would be in the northern hemisphere. The duration date uh, between the um, comet and the 2024 is uh, coding to 1666. Interesting. Um, number of man, I don't see it as the number of beasts, because, well, basically, we are the beast, okay, that's the way I see it, not everybody sees it that way, and um, then we have the numbers breaking down to 45 again, so we've got um, the 45th president and uh, M45 being the Pleiades, all very interesting. Then if you take uh, 4 times 6, 4 years, 6 months, it comes to 24 um, and 22 days, which is the exact uh, date that it's coded to, um, which is when I think the, this event is going to happen is on the 22nd of December in 2024. Now I had this little video that was simulating its path and you can see the white loop there, that's the, the path that it's on. It comes in to um, our solar system and you can see that it's... Um, going right between Earth and Venus, there's a line, I drew the little line there, um, the blue line to see that it's in conjunction with the Sun. And this is this graph is saying it's around May 28th, well, it's very close, May 28th, May 30th, around there. And then it loops around and it stays with us all summer until it gets onto the other side and in September, it's uh, again in conjunction with Venus, but of course Earth is on the other side. So um, it's with us all summer. So it's going to be very interesting to see what it's going to do um, with the energies to the sun. Um, is it going to have a peace break off and cause a CME? Um, is that why, you know, so many ventilators are needed um, to have on storage? Like, I don't know. Like, all I'm saying, I'm speculating, but there was something going down and something big's going down. And we, I just wanted to put this together to make you aware of, you know, the dates and, and uh, exactly um, what to look for in the sky. Okay, about Venus here. All the planets in the solar system orbit um, the sun in an anti-clockwise direction as viewed above um, with the Earth's North Pole. Most planets also rotate on their um, axis in an anti-clockwise direction, but Venus rotates clockwise in retrograde rotation once every um, 243 Earth days, the slowest uh, rotation of any planet. Because of this rotation is so slow, Venus is very close to uh, spherical. So it's a different type of planet, okay? Venus may have uh, formed from the solar uh, nebula with a different rotation period and um, obligatory, um, obligatory uh, reaching its current uh, state because of the chaotic spin changes. So anyhow, it's just a different type of planet. It's the same size as Earth.
It's saying that it had an impact event billions of years ago, about 10 billion years ago, um, had to do with the moon, um, and it destabilized the large satellites. So anyhow, there's lots to understand about Venus, but Venus is a very important planet. It's basically our sister twin planet. Not only was there a transit in 1639, um, uh, um, and that's exactly 1639 months later, they created the founding of the United States, but there was also one in the 1800s here that Captain Cook happened to be, uh, <laughs> you know, discovering or looking at. So, yeah, we're back to Captain Cook, Peter Pan. It's like crazy world. So here's explaining how the Babylonians and Egyptians saw it as uh, two separate planets. And it's also talking about phosphorus again being here, the light uh, bringer. Um, and in Latin, it's Lucifer. Okay, so this is, I spoke about this a little earlier. Um, also, Van Gogh had this picture with Venus being in it. So you can see Venus is super important in a lot of... Um, you know, history, and they were, uh, you know, really tracking it, even the Mayans were, so, uh, there's a, there's, obviously, something happens with Venus on this planet, something relating to Venus, where position it's in, something occurs here, there's no way all these ancients would be, you know, obsessed with mapping it, and following it, and, you know, doing hieroglyphs with it, and blah, 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 all because it has no importance, so, I just find it fascinating that we're coming into the 33rd pentagram uh, since the founding of the United States, the Venus pentagram conjunctions um, in the year 2025, you know, uh, and right now we're in the 32nd pentagram. Um, so, you know, the Freemasons, uh, 32nd and 33 are super important to them. So you, we can see it's all kind of coming to a head um, and this uh, map that they've been following or watching is coming to uh, its completion. So there's also renowned uh, scientists that have been obsessed with Venus as well and here it's calling uh, one of the seminars is about the unlucky uh, sister planet Venus or actually they're calling it the twin. They're also doing seminars with the uh, Venus um, atmosphere relating to earth climate change. What a coincidence. And here they're showing it how the comets are related to it as well. Um, you know, so the comet, uh, the climate change, the pandemics, these are all correlating to Venus. Here's some of the scientists that uh, have been studying influenza and highly uh, infectious and lethal viral diseases um, in conjunction with Venus uh, and the conjunctions of Venus with Earth and the Sun. They're saying um, there's some type of bacterial substance in the higher atmosphere of Venus, and it's, Venus is kind of like a comet, has a comet's tail, and uh, I guess when it's in conjunction with the Sun, it's kind of the Sun is pushing some of this bacteria towards Earth, and uh, basically dust particles that are causing bacterial uh, maybe infections. So here's somebody posted that every election year we have a disease with all these um, pandemics. Somebody sent me this link, what got me all onto this, showing all these different dates of, um, of uh, diseases um, in history since the 1930s and all correlating with the new moon. So every time there's a new moon, um, this bacterial uh, infestation ends up happening. When there's no new moon, there doesn't seem to be one. So there's something relating to the moon as well um, with these uh, infections. And I, I mapped it all out. I went in and checked it all out to see if this was legit. Um, and it totally is. I'm not going to, you know, show you guys and take up too much uh, space and time. So, uh, but yeah, there's something to this. And so we're right in that same um, thing happening in May with the uh, new moon conjunction in the Silver Gate with Venus, the sun, and a comet. How exciting. So I'll just leave this so you guys can read through it. But the, the scientist's name is Bob um, Fitz, Fitzius, um, and uh, he's explaining exactly, you know, his theory that all this um, pandemics being with these Venus um, sun conjunctions and scientifically what the theory is all about. And here's a map showing, um, you know, a graph with the little pink dots is showing when all the pandemics are. 
Um, it's just, it's kind of fascinating because uh, a viral infection, I've been listening to some doctors talk about viral infections and saying that, you know, there's no real proof that viruses are contagious because they're not live, you know, um, and more so it's more about bacterias that are contagious, live bacteria. So this would make sense, you know, uh, with these pandemics coming in from this, you know, outer atmosphere. So it's just something to think about. I know it's way off mainstream, um, and that's fine. I'm just trying to keep an open mind, trying to connect the dots, and uh, you can do what you want with the information, you know, d discard it or whatever. But I just find it fascinating with this comet coming in and all this happening, you know, and uh, is this relating to... Uh, you know, ancient times, and is there a correlation with this, um, you know, uh, pandemic that we're living through right now? And something else I want to bring to everybody's attention that when comets um, come into our atmosphere, they bring a lot of Zion with them because this is where Zion comes from, is from comets. Okay, so basically Zion, it's a noble gas. Um, they use it for different things like uh, for lights, plasma lights. There's a whole list of things that it's used for. I'm not going to go into it. You can do your own research on it. But um, it is kind of interesting because it has um, symptoms um, if it's breathed in. Um, a little bit like high altitude symptoms, but they've also used it in athletes to produce um, higher levels of red blood cells. And it was uh, basically uh, stricken from um, anti-doping so that you can't use it anymore. But at the same time, they're saying here that they cannot test for it either. So it's on the list of a, a substance that's not to be used, but um, there's no way of testing for it. Now, the reason that I'm bringing this up is has a lot to do with um, a video that I listened to from a healthcare worker in New York City that is dealing with the coronavirus and he is baffled by the symptoms of the coronavirus in his patients and he's noticing that they seem to be having symptoms more of high altitude than actual like pneumonia symptoms. So he's saying the ventilators are not uh, working well because the ventilators are opening up the lungs and it seems like the patients are having trouble getting oxygen. Now that is quite a coincidence since Zion would do the exact same thing and we have a comet that is producing Zion and bringing it into our atmosphere exactly at this time this period. So I want you to listen to this uh, healthcare worker so it's not just me saying it and uh, it'll take like five minutes but I think it's a, a good listen so that you can get the understanding of the symptoms. RDS that every hospital is preparing to treat and this is the disease ARDS, for which in the next two to six weeks, 100,000 Americans might be put on a ventilator. And yet, everything I've seen in the last nine days, all the things that just don't make sense, the patients I'm seeing in front of me, the lungs I'm trying to improve, have led me to believe that COVID-19 is not this disease, and that we are operating under a medical paradigm that is untrue. In short, I believe we are treating the wrong disease. And I fear that this misguided treatment will lead to a tremendous amount of harm to a great number of people in a very short time. As New York City appears to be about 10 days ahead of the country, I feel compelled to get this information out. COVID-19 lung disease, as far as I can see, is not a pneumonia and should not be treated as one. Rather, it appears as if some kind of viral, it appears as some kind of viral-induced disease, most resembling high-altitude sickness. It is as if tens of thousands of my fellow New Yorkers are on a plane at 30,000 feet and the cabin pressure is slowly being let out. These patients are slowly being starved of oxygen. I have seen patients dependent on oxygen take off their oxygen and quickly progress through a state of anxiety and emotional distress and eventually get blue in the face. And while they look like patients absolutely on the brink of death, they do not look like patients dying of pneumonia. I have never been a mountain climber, and I do not know the conditions at base camp below the highest peaks in the world, uh, but I suspect that the patients I'm seeing in front of me uh, look most like as if a person was dropped off on the top of Mount Everest without time to acclimate. Uh, I don't know the final answer of this disease. 
but I'm quite sure that a ventilator is not it. Uh, that is not to say that we don't need ventilators. We absolutely need them. Uh, they are the only way at this time that we're able to give a little more oxygen to patients who need it. Uh, but when we treat people with ARDS, uh, we typically use ventilators uh, to treat what's called respiratory failure. Uh, that is, uh, we use the ventilator to do the work that the patient's muscles can no longer do because they're too tired to do it. These patients' muscles work fine. I fear that we are I fear that if we are using a false paradigm to treat a new disease, uh, that the method that we program the ventilator, one based on a notion of respiratory failure as opposed to oxygen failure, that this method, and there are a great many number of methods we can use with the ventilator, but this method being widely adopted at this very moment in every hospital in the country, which aims to increase pressure on the lungs in order to open them up, is actually doing more harm than good, and that the pressure we are providing uh, that we are providing to lungs, we may be providing to lungs that cannot stand it, that cannot take it, and that the ARDS that we are seeing, that the whole world is seeing, may be nothing more than lung injury caused by the ventilator. Okay, so you heard the doctor talking about how it seems like a high altitude uh, issue with his patients turning blue, they're having trouble getting oxygen. Now the thing with Zion, um, it creates this EPO in the blood, which is like through the red blood cells, which also causes um, liver problems, but also anemia. And then it also causes hypoxemia, which has to do with high altitude. So we're starting to see that the Zion is causing the same symptoms as what this doctor is talking about with COVID. So that's what kind of got the red flag up for me. So hypoxia is, uh, yeah, it's a high altitude sickness here. And you're showing, it's showing like how uh, the symptoms are. And you can read through this, but this basically lack of oxygen into the body, you know, not going into the body properly. So they're saying here that it's a respiratory distress, it's breathlessness. Um, also, there's a problem with getting uh, ventilation into the lungs. Um, it can also cause heart failure, uh, cough. There's the cough. Um, it's saying hypoxemia refers to inefficient oxygen in the blood. It can cause uh, influences in a rate of volume of air entering the lungs. So, yeah, it, it's it's all there, the ventilation, everything. So, you know, it's just kind of, is it a coincidence, this comet coming through and comets create, you know, have Zion with them and it's this massive comet that hasn't been here for 3,000 years and it's going into a Venus conjunction, uh, which tends to cause uh, pandemics because of bacteria in the Venus atmosphere. Is this all like, you know, like fringe science that these scientists have been looking at this or is it the real science and it's just not being told to us by the masses you know it's a big conspiracy theory i don't know but all i'm saying is it's too much of a coincidence with this doctor talking about this high altitude um, issues with these covid patients and then zion is exactly that's exactly what it causes so for me it was just like okay that's just too much of a coincidence and i just wanted to share it with you guys you can take this whichever way you want um, but I just find it interesting that, you know, maybe that's why they're telling us to stay inside a lot. I'm going to try to look into more, you know, ways of helping our lungs, um, deal with high altitude because I know athletes do train in high altitude for, to create, um, you know, a, a good, uh, response for being back in normal altitude. Um, so like there's stuff that we need to look into and I'm going to look into that, but, um, this, I just wanted to get this out and, uh, and, and share with you guys. I don't know if you guys have heard of Ben, um, Greenfield. He's a triathlon athlete. Um, that, hey, he's written a book. He's done a really good interview that I listened to with a doctor. They were explaining all these different health benefits that you can do. He does some extreme stuff like, um, uh, you know, jumping into cold water and, and really some really extreme stuff that he does. But uh, he's also gives a lot of good points as well, like the average person probably would take on. Uh, here's some things uh, to do is eat iron-rich food, um, use uh, resisted or restricted breathing, and uh, hydrate. The hydrating is interesting. I just bought a hydrogen uh, machine. It's like a jug that, that changes your water, uh, it hydrates your water to hydrogen water. 
Um, and I feel way more um, hydrated. My skin's more hydrated. Um, I, I really do think it's helped with my breathing as well. So basically, I just feel a little bit younger, you know, from it. Um, and I look younger, so I know it does work. Um, but, um, you know, obviously cardiovascular exercise would be really great. He's, they're talking here about supplements, but I'll definitely drop the, this uh, Ben Greenfield link. I think there's a lot of uh, good information in it, even if it is a little extreme. Uh, it is motivating. So I think at this point, that's the best things we can do is just to stay healthy, stay positive, eat properly, rest well, you know, and just look after your body. <clears throat> and hopefully, you know, we'll get through this. I, now this comet's coming in in the end of May. So, you know, is it going to be more difficult if there's more Zion in the atmosphere? And maybe that's what they're preparing us for, you know, and just don't want to tell us because it would ca probably cause mass panic. You know, not that there's not enough panic as it is. We're already in panic, but um, knowing that it's coming from the cosmos, most people would panic probably even more. Now, they're talking about sunspots as well. Um, we're, the cycle, we're in the 24th cycle right now. Uh, the 25th cycle will be starting in 2023 to 2026, which is, you know, around the 2024 mark. Um, we're into the 25th cycle of um, solar... Uh, you know, black spots. So uh, that's interesting because it's all relating to the number 25 and it just happens to be the 25th cycle. I find that fascinating as well. So, you know, I think the solar system has way more to do with our reality on Earth than anybody wants to give credit to. I think um, the secret mystery schools knew this. I think that's why, you know, it's being kept secret uh, because they can kind of force shadow or foresee uh, what's going to happen because of the planetary um, rotations and where they're conjuncting and um, you know how that can play out on earth and if everybody knew that um, it would be kind of mayhem on this planet so I think that's why it's being kept a secret but um, the cat's out of the bag we're coming to the end times and you know for those who want to see uh, can see. Here's the green man. So the green man um, is also an ancient mythos. Um, and, you know, here they're saying it's the size of the sun. Okay, so here's some mythos about the green man, which I think this uh, comet represents. And one of the roles of ancient Egyptian god Osiris um, is regarded as the green deity and is calmly depicted with a green face representing vegetation, rebirth, and resurrection. Interesting, we're in, um, today is April 4th, which is the day after of uh, Jesus' death, so we're in resurrection right now. Um, so basically, it's about rebirth, right? Resprouting. And there's green man, there's a pagan mythos of the green man, face of glory. It's related to Shiva. People think Shiva is only destruction, but she's also rebirth. Um, uh, the wheel of becoming, uh, the crowning, uh, the green one, um, is the green face, righteous servant of God who possessed great wisdom and mystic knowledge. He is um, most often said to be a contemporary of Moses. Okay, so you start to see that, you know, the fear mongering of, you know, the green dragon or whatever, it, it's really fear mongering and to just maybe this is just a huge rebirth and maybe this is why we're in lockdown right now is because this rebirth, maybe there's going to be some particles coming from the sky. Uh, it's going to have trouble with people breathing. Maybe there are children that are being rescued um, and going on these mercy ships and the comfort ships that happen to be parked in Hell's Kitchen. Uh, you know, uh, the comfort ship in New York. Um, you know, who knows? We don't know. But all I'm saying is things are happening in the sky and it's mirroring what's happening here. And everything is about a mirror image. So what's happening on the micro is on the macro. And so how you perceive it all is just as important as what's happening. It's really important that you, you become the universe that you want. You become, um, you know... Uh, in a sense of a gnosis that you can see things without freaking out and fearing and creating um, this energy that's going into everything that is negative. Okay, so we want to be a positive force. We want to help um, 
keep people calm. We want to look at the positivity. We want to be aware of things that could go wrong but and be prepared, but we also want to just keep believing in positivity because if we all believe that this is a great time to be alive and we're going into some wonderful changes and things are going to start to get better and, you know, uh, then, then we're going to uh, basically bring that forth. So this is why I put this info together because there's a lot of misinformation out there. There's a lot of fear mongering. Um, and when there is, you know, sometimes when I first heard about this comment, I was like, ah, but then I was like, the more I looked into it, I was like, oh, you know, maybe it's a, a good omen. You know, it's not a bad omen. So, um, and maybe it is part of what's going on with the, um, the bacterial, you know, infections, you know, virus or whatever you want to call it, um, you know, for people. And maybe it is good that we're all inside and safe and, and starting to contemplate at a more peaceful uh, space uh, right now. So it's all crazy times, but um, just enjoy the ride and uh, and I'll keep, uh, anytime I come up with new information, I'll just uh, share it with you guys. Take care.